What's up guys, it's Victor here again. Not so long ago, I unboxed today's Samsung Galaxy A12 and I promised to make a full review on this device or come back with any new information I might have noticed. And here we are. The Samsung Galaxy A12 is a good buy if you think of it as a budget phone. But if you want something high end or something to do more than what a budget phone should do, then before you even start watching this video, this is not the device for you and you will hear why. This device costs 66,000 Naira or thereabouts in Nigeria here and it comes with 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage space, 5,000 mAh battery, the Helio P35 chip and it comes with a pretty decent looking body in my own opinion. I have timestamps to various sections of this video as a table of contents in the description box below. Subscribe if you're not and also don't forget to turn on your post notification bell icon so that you'll be notified the next time and every other time I post a new video like this one. The Samsung A12 comes in a solid build, it's comfortable to hold, however, I dislike the water drop notch display. I feel it's something that we've moved away from. So to cost cost on this device, they had to use the water drop components they had, which they weren't able to use and they can't use in their high-end recent phones. And I also think the bottom bezel is kind of big. And for the buttons and port placements, I already have a video showing where everything is, my unboxing video. So if you haven't watched that video, I'll leave the link to that video up here above. There is a 5000 milliamp hour battery on the Samsung Galaxy A12. It is big and can last very, very well. But the issue is it takes long to charge. There is a 15 watt fast charging capability on the Samsung Galaxy A12. Even so, it feels like 5 watts because it takes over three hours to get full. Notwithstanding, battery life on the Samsung Galaxy A12 is very, very good. Even with using this device as my mobile hotspot all through the day, it still survives a full day of being a mobile hotspot. The Samsung Galaxy A12 boots the core version of One UI. One UI core version 2.5 slapped on top of Android 10, so you don't have Android 11 here, and hopefully this device will get Android 11. Samsung has already promised two years software updates on their devices. I don't know if a budget device like this one is part of that plan, but hopefully this device will see Android 12. Because this device doesn't run on the standard One UI, but the core version One UI, you will not find a lot of features, One UI features you will find on standard One UI phones. For instance, you won't find the Smart View option here. There's no secure folder. The software experience is just like every other Samsung Galaxy phone, but without those specific features which are only found on the standard one new iPhones. Software is clean except for some essential blocks which you can even uninstall if you find them intrusive. You made it this far into this video, a sub to the channel would really mean a lot to me. Please don't hesitate to like and share this video so that your friends too can see and subscribe to the channel. Powering the Samsung Galaxy A12 is the MediaTek Helio P35 which I think it's underwhelming. It's a 12 nanometer processor with a mass clock speed of 1.8 GHz. It's supported by the PowerView L G E8320 GPU, 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. But you can also get this device in other three variants: 3 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage, 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage, 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage. Multitasking or switching between apps is smooth initially, but when you start using this phone over time, when you start putting things in it, overloading it, when you start installing apps it will start dragging. So the MediaTek Helio P35 is really underwhelming for a phone of this design, of this caliber, of this price really, 66,000 Naira, we'll be here. App retention isn't fantastic either. Do let me know which phone you want me to compare this phone with. The fingerprint sensor is side mounted on the power button and I found it to be mostly reliable and fast and decently accurate. However, the face unlock is not really good. I had a complaint in my earlier video, the unboxing video, which the link is up here, which I mentioned that the face unlock doesn't register my face. I got the device to finally register my face, but 70 or 80% of the time, I still struggle with the face unlock system. I still have to blink and open my eyes wide open for it to recognize me. If the room is dark, this thing wouldn't work. The face unlock system is not really good but not really bad as I made it sound the other day. It actually works. I think my softbox was confusing it. But when I finally got it to register my face or work, I still struggled a lot with the face unlock system. 
There's a mono down firing speaker on the Samsung Galaxy A12. It is not balanced and not clear. It is loud enough though and also very crisp so you enjoy speeches and podcasts. There's a Dolby Atmos settings in the quick settings panel to improve the audio quality. Call quality on the Samsung Galaxy A12 is great. I was able to hear and I was heard loud and clear. This is a microphone test of the Samsung Galaxy A12. This is a microphone test of the Samsung Galaxy A12. The audio you are currently listening to is coming straight out of the Samsung Galaxy A12, unprocessed, unedited. Do let me know what you think about the audio quality in the comment section below. The camera mount on the Samsung Galaxy A12 consists of a 48 megapixel quad camera setup, 5 megapixel ultra wide camera, 2 megapixel macro camera, 2 megapixel depth sensing camera, and an LED flashlight. On the front of the device is an 8 megapixel selfie camera enclosed in a water drop notch. Camera quality isn't great on the rear and the front. Pictures looked over sharpened and too contrasty, so I won't recommend this phone as a camera device. Here are sample pictures from the front and rear cameras of the Samsung Galaxy A12. The Samsung Galaxy A12 shoots video up to 1080p at 30 frames per second with no form of image stabilization whatsoever. Again, this is not an image photography or video centric device, so I don't recommend this as a camera device. In conclusion, I think the Samsung Galaxy A12 is a good and solid device, but is it worth the price at 66,000 Nigerian Nairas or 150 US dollars? I expected more from the Samsung Galaxy A12. I expected a better processor for better multitasking and better performance. I expected a better camera system for better photographs and videos. And at least 1080p 60 frames per second won't be that bad. Nonetheless, I would be recommending this device based on three reasons. The first would be because of software updates, Samsung would push updates to the device hopefully. They promised two years of software updates on their devices, even though I'm not sure a budget device like this one is in that plan, but hopefully this device will see Android version 12. Second reason would be because of the massive battery pack on here. The 5000mAh battery would be enough to take you through a full day of modest phone usage even when you use this phone as a mobile hotspot like I did. The only issue with the battery is that it's, the charging speed is very very slow. The third reason would be because of the large RAM and storage space it comes with. If you choose this option which I have here, you get 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. If you want more memory space, you can opt in for the 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage. So guys, there you have it, the Samsung Galaxy A12. I don't recommend this device for power, I don't recommend this device for camera, I don't recommend this device for design, I recommend it for storage, I recommend it for battery, and I recommend it for updates. Subscribe if you're not, like and share this video if it was helpful. Thank you for watching this one guys and I'll see you when I see you in the next one. Peace.